everybody, I'm Dan. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the importance of the unsigned int3 struct and the dim3 integer vector. Let's go ahead and open up our web browser to my website, thegpu.com. I'll just click the menu up here and select GPU Tutorials. Um, then we'll click on dim3 and unsigned int3. Now in my previous tutorial, Introduction to Kernels, I discussed the second parameter of the execution configuration. Right, and the execution configuration is inside of these triple chevrons here, specifically this second parameter right here. Now, at first glance, it looks like the parameter is simply an unsigned int value, but there is so much more to it than that. It is important to note that the G in GPU is for graphics, and that high end gaming systems are the reason that video cards have become so blazing fast. Images in modern games are presented in 3D and some 2D, so it makes sense that APIs would support graphics based on X, Y, and Z coordinates. Now the first two parameters are actually structs or integer vectors of, of three dimensions, either an unsigned int3 or a dim3. So let's go over the unsigned int3, basically the struct there, and it takes three values, unsigned int X, Y, and Z. Now this struct is less desirable to use than, uh, this should actually be dim3, got a little typo there, but it's important to understand how it works. You must initialize all the x, y, and z values to be greater than one, right? So here's an example of how we can initialize uh, this var name variable, right, to one, and then pass that in as a second parameter. So the second parameter of the execution configuration has to do with the number of threads that each block can run in parallel. And I haven't gone over what blocks are yet, but I will in later. So, uh, but for now, I'm, I'm putting off the first parameter for a later tutorial. So the following specifications apply only to the second parameter. And these specs are based, uh, you know, at the time of this video. Future versions may support more, but this is basically compute capability 6.x or greater um, using CUDA 9. So but maybe future versions will support more. Who knows? It's been this way for a while now. So the X maximum value, 1024, Y value, maximum value, 1024, and Z value, 64, okay? Now do not try to open more than 1024 threads per block, and you will need to do the math. CUDA will not do it for you, and I'll demonstrate that here in the, in the source code here, okay? Now let's talk about the, uh, the preferred way of doing this, which is the the dim3 integer vector. We still have three, basically three values we have to, well, we don't have to actually, but we got the x, the y, and the z. So unlike the unsigned int3, you do not have to initialize any of the x, y, or z dimensions. Any value that is not explicitly assigned will be initialized to one. Now do not assign any of the dimension values to zero. The kernels will not execute. Okay, so here's an example. We could do a dim3 var name here, pass that in, and that will be the same thing as having one initialized in both the x, the y, and all the x, y, or z dimensions. You can also initialize it like this, two. Now this is the same three thing as two comma one comma one, right? This will initialize only the x dimension to the, the value that's specified here. Two comma three, this will initialize the x to 2 and the y to 3. And then if you do 2, 5, and 3 on that, you'll basically get 30 threads. Okay, I'll explain that here in a second here. Um, so the same rules apply as unsigned int 3 when it comes to maximum values for the uh, x, y. Oh, you know what? Let's see. Let me refresh something here. Yeah, there we go. Like I did, wasn't getting my indents, indents in there properly there. So same rules, x, y, z values. X maximum 1024, Y maximum 1024, and Z maximum 64. And do not, once again, do not try to open more than 1024 threads per block. You need to do the math. CUDA will not do it for you. I'm just going to reiterate that, and I'm going to go over that in the video here. <laughs> Let's talk about the total number of threads. So the formula for calculating the total number of threads that will be executed, executed based only on the second parameter is as follows, and it's really simple. You take the dim 3x value times the dim 3y value times the dim 3z value, and you get the total number of threads that will execute. Now it's important to note the formula above assumes a default value of one for the first execution parameter. In other words, that's more like the grid and the block parameter. Okay, let's go ahead and write some code here. So I'm going to move this off screen. 
we're going to come here and open up the visual the developer command prompt for Visual Studio 2015 um, Oh, yeah, one more thing here, you know, uh, before continuing with this tutorial, make sure that you have NVCC installed and configured properly. See my installing the Kudu Toolkit um, tutorial if you haven't done that, okay? All right, let's go ahead and do a CD backslash CD and then a MD CUDA, which is my CUDA folder, but I already have it. If you don't, I create it for you. I'll change directories to the CUDA folder. I'm going to make a directory here. I'm just going to call this one uh, DIM3 Demo. Change directories to the DIM3 demo and notepad plus plus DIM3 demo.cu, cu being the CUDA extension. All right, let's bring back over the website here and let's come down here and uh, copy all this source code here and paste it over here. You don't want to see me type all that in, but we're going to be doing a lot of. I've set this up for a lot of uncommenting and testing, and I'm going to show you, and it's show you various different things that it's really important to understand that what what exactly these two uh, these two things do here. So uh, first off, right, I've got this kernel up here, which of course, if you remember from the last tutorial, is prefixed with this global specifier here, and it display it does nothing more than just displays GPU thread indexes, right? Um, X, Y, and Z, right? And there's the thread IDX property and the dot X and the dot Y and the dot Z values. So we'll be able to see those displayed to the console here. And then of course our host function here, main, which is our entry point. The first thing I'm doing is I'm demonstrating the uh, unsigned int three structs here, right? With this variable threads. And I'm initializing it to one, one, and one, right? And then we got a whole bunch of stuff commented out here. I'm going to display to the console what the struct vector values are, because eventually we'll be doing the vector ones, the dim threes here, right? And as you can see, threads right up here, right? This unsigned int three, we can access its values by simply using the dot notation dot x dot y and dot z. So we'll display that to the console, and then right here we will go ahead and pass in the threads variable as a second parameter of the execution configuration right and this will basically execute this kernel right up here it's all fairly simple there uh, let's go ahead and save this and play around with it here I'm gonna clear the screen NVCC uh, and our output file will be I'm just gonna call it dim3 demo as well okay all right uh, let's go ahead and execute the dim3 demo so we get our struct vector values, one, one, and one, right? And we get our GPU thread indexes, zero, y, x equals zero, y equals zero, and z equals zero. You remember, um, you have to remember, don't forget that the indexes always start off at zero. You know, same thing as vectors or arrays, right? So pretty simple, straightforward on that. But we just, you know, we just wanted to make sure that this line actually executes. All right, let's go over the next thing here. Um, You could, for example, do something like this, right? And the difference between this and say this DIM3 is this will actually not, not necessarily work there. You may get lucky it might work, but most likely it's going to throw a bunch of, bunch of garbage into there. So we're gonna get a couple of warnings that it's not used before its value is set, but we can go ahead and run it anyway, right? And so here's the values that it assigned by, you know, just a bunch of garbage variables. And then you could see this GPU thread indexes did not execute, and that's because this this times this times this is way more than 1,024, so it will not execute, okay? Um, you can initialize the various different elements, the dimensions per se, of this, uh, of this after you've uh, basically declared it there, right? And of course, using the formula, two times four times three equals 24 total threads. Let's go ahead and save that, and we'll run that. Let's clear our screen. Compile and run. Okay, um, so basically you can count all these, but in fact it is 24 threads there, and you can see the various different x, y, and z values go from zero to basically up to two on that, uh, zero to four on this, exactly what we're expecting there. 
zero to three, I'm sorry. And of course, zero and one max values in there. So, all right, let's move on to the next thing here. <clears throat> okay, um, let's clear our screen. Recompile, rerun. Okay, so in this particular example, one of the val the y value was set to zero, so it did not execute at all, right? We got the, the values of x, y, and z, but once again, we got nothing executed there, right? It will not warn you, it will compile, it will go, and so you have to be aware of that. You have to do the math. I'm just driving that point home there, right? All right, let's say uh, x or y value is greater than 1024. So I got the x value set to 1025, and let's see what happens here. So you can see our x value is 1025. Once again, no execution. The kernel did not execute. Too many, more than 1024. CUDA, once again, does not tell you. Maybe someday the, the NVCC compiler will actually tell you, but uh, right out of the command line, it sure doesn't right now, right? So the X or Y values have to be 1,024 or less, right? Um, now the, the Z value has to be 64, so if we do 65 in here, right, and we compile this again, and we run it. Oh, I didn't save that, obviously, as you can see by those values right there. So now we're saved. run that and once again nothing executed right there kernel did not execute let's clear our screen clean that up a little bit all right the last thing I want to demonstrate here is um, well, let's go ahead and save this for sure here so 32 times 16 times 3 equals 1536 greater than 1024 will not execute right oh let's compile Once again, will not execute. Let's change this last value here, the, the Z value, to two. All right, that'll give us exactly 1,024 threads. And let's uh, clear our screen, recompile, and um, run this, right? And boom, now we've got a whole bunch of different values in there. Uh, you can see that uh, based on these numbers here, that the threads didn't necessarily execute in any particular order and um, you know they're just it's not really guaranteed that they will so that's something to keep in mind um, that your that your thread ex your kernels I'm oh, sorry keep going them but anyway the kernels on the threads don't necessarily execute in any particular sequential um, order there all right let's uh, clear our screen and move on to the dim three Okay, so dim3, we can just uh, basically declare the variable, right, threads, and let's uh, go ahead and recompile that and run that. And as you can see, the x, the y, and the z values were all initialized to 1. And of course, we had our GPU, our kernel, actual execu actually execute there, okay? Um, that, of course, is the exact same thing as doing it this way here, right? And uh, we'll get the exact same results there. One, 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 and the index is there and executed. All right, so that's important to, to note there. All right, um, if you set any values to zero, right, you will not get a warning, this will compile, and once again, the, um, the kernel will not execute. Right? So it's important to understand that the scenarios where the kernel will not execute because oftentimes you might be scratching your head and go, wow, why didn't, why didn't, what happened? You know, and it's really kind of difficult to chase these things down. So uh, let's go ahead and do this one right here. Okay. Clear our screen. Okay. So just a single initialization, right, two, um, will actually just execute two threads, of course, and put them into the, uh, into the X dimension there. Now, you may, be, you may have just figured this out now that this essentially, when you pass in, say, one parameter like this, right, when you're doing um, 
this this sort of thing here and you put in that three for the second parameter it's actually just basically doing this under the hood right there so um, hopefully that was kind of a little eureka moment for you there so you can understand that that you know these these first two parameters aren't in fact just integer parameters they really are dim three um, vectors there so uh, let's go ahead and save this and let's clear our screen off recompile and so we've got two for the first parameter three for the second that's going to put it into the x and y dimensions of course right two and three and as you can see we've got our x dimension two and our y dimension uh three so all right we are cruising right along once again um you have to be aware and you have to do the math you have to calculate this and i cannot uh, yeah i just need to drive that point home there on this particular value setting 1025 in there right it will not execute okay boom all right um go ahead and comment this out all right so just leave all that commented out so in my last tutorial you saw something like this right and you know you're going to get uh, you know three executions of this kernel up here, right? And let's go ahead and save this. Run it. And there you go. Right into the Z, right into the X value there. Okay. Um, you can also do something like this as far as uh, the execution configuration goes, and just put the dim three right in there as the parameter. This of course will execute four times four times four. 16 times 4, 40, uh, boy, I'm drawing a blank this morning there. Was that 54? Anyway, whatever. Um, 64, yeah, 64 threads there is what we'll end up producing on that. Went too early for math this morning, I'll tell you what. Um, let's clear our screen. Make sure I save this, right? And we'll run that there too. Okay, um, we've gotten up to four on all of the various different dimensions there. So anyway, um, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and just minimize this, minimize this, and leave you guys with some final thoughts. So, you know, I really haven't demonstrated anything that shows you the true power of GPU parallel programming yet. Um, you know, when I was first le learning CUDA programming myself, I had a difficult time figuring things out based on, you know, sample code scattered around the internet. Um, but uh, over time, you know, I've really come to understand, I've really come to uh, appreciate the importance of understanding the relationship between uh, things, for example, like grids, blocks, multiprocessors, stream processors, threads, and warps. You know, it's absolutely critical to becoming a successful GPU programmer. So that's why I'm kind of spending a lot of time on each one of these things here. It may seem kind of tedious and monotonous, but, you know, one of the biggest things that I, you know, run, run into there is like, People are like, oh wow, look at all these threads and these CUDA processors and everything like that. I should just be able to go and, hey, I want to open up a million threads and run it. But there's, it's, it's much more complicated than, than, than just doing that, you know. So, but anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.